Hi, I'm Monk and this is the Monk Way. 5G is coming and it's coming fast. This is the next generation of mobile internet. Is this going to be the next marijuana sector? With thousands of percents in gains? There's always a possibility. So let's look at the best 5G stocks to watch right now. These are the best companies that I think will do well in this sector. Don't miss a second because one of these companies has potential to really multiply your money. Subscribe and leave a like for more investing videos. I make them every day. And join my stock market group to see which of these companies I will be buying. There could be hundreds of percents in returns and 75% off right now. I'm also running a contest to win a lifetime membership to my stock market group. Just be subscribed, leave a like, and also leave a comment about anything. I pick a new winner every week. Let's begin with a quick lesson on 5G, which stands for the fifth generation of mobile internet. You want to know at least this much before you invest in any of these. 5G is basically what's coming after 4G. Think of the speed 4G gave you compared to 3G. It will be up to 100 times faster than the current 4G and have lower latency. This just means that downloading on your phone will be faster and have less lag. Imagine a Skype call in 4K resolution, or watching Netflix on your phone in 4K. Gaming on the go will have much less lag, and bandwidth should increase as well. Otherwise, the speed is pretty pointless. This is also important for self-driving cars because you'll need that speed to get you home safely. The lower latency could mean the difference between life or death. It can also be used for the Internet of Things, meaning devices in your home that are all connected. One connection seamlessly, making sure all your devices are communicating. 1G came out in 1981. This is when we had those huge phones that could only do calls. 2G in 1990s when we had flip phones that could send text. 3G in 2001, allowing to watch video and fast internet browsing. And recently 4G appeared in 2010, a much faster connection, five times as fast as 3G, allowing us to do most things on the go. Now we have 5G, a connection that could go as fast as 10 gigabits per second, or 100 times the speed of 4G. But download speed isn't what's important. Most things we have now work fine with 4G. 5G contains very low latency, allowing things to communicate almost in real time, no lag. This means new technology in self-driving cars, robots controlled from anywhere around the world, virtual reality, and so many more things possible only because of 5G. 4G uses cell phone towers. There are around 200,000 providing us data. But 5G requires much closer, but smaller towers. They're so small that you can put them up on any roof. It could require as much as 500,000 of them in North America. So there's a lot of money to be made, likely to become the norm in 2020 and beyond. A new generation of technology means a new generation of profits. So any network upgrading early will see a lot more profits. Let's see a few of my favorite stocks that would likely spike from their adoption into 5G. Don't miss a minute of this video because I'll explain why each company is good and their advantages. Let's start with a company that makes chips for 5G on your phones, Qualcomm. The company that makes Snapdragon chips has already made 5G chips called Snapdragon X55. They're working with 20 network providers and expect to be the supplier of choice on the first wave of 5G devices. Let's look at their stock. They're up 5% in the past year and down 28% in 5 years. This is basically a slow moving company with a dividend of 4.3%. PE ratio of 36, pretty good profits. Price to sale of 3.2, pretty good revenue, but they have high debts. Going to the revenue history, we see why they're on a dip. They've been dropping in the past few years of 5% a year on average. And recently in 2018, they're up about 2%, so that's something. Looking at profits, there are huge drops of 30 to 50%. In 2018, we saw an almost 300% drop. This is negative $4.8 billion last year, so there's some risk here. They're on quite a dip in the recent years because of their disputes with Apple. They removed the chips from Apple's iPhone and they're in a lawsuit with them. This lawsuit really cost them a lot. Qualcomm is very ahead with their chips. They're ahead of Intel by a whole generation of 5G technology and on par with Samsung and Huawei. These guys will be the first to supply chips to your phones. This means huge profits as more phones switch to 5G because it will require the next generation of modems. The popular Samsung Galaxy S10 series currently doesn't have 5G but Qualcomm will supply the Galaxy S10 5G version with their processors. So the chips will be in one of the most popular series of phones from Samsung. They're also going to be in the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3, Sony Xperia 5G, LG 5G, OnePlus 5G, and many more. This is the leader of 5G chip making, but they have a lot of legal issues with Apple causing drops in profits. This is the risk to take. Since they're on the dip, there is more room to rise, but also more room to drop. Let's move on to a provider of 5G service, Verizon Communications. This company wants to launch 5G in more than 30 cities by the end of the year. They have some of the best coverage of 4G, according to independent studies, and they plan on upgrading existing 4G towers to 5G, making it a cheaper process. They're going to spend 18 billion this year on 5G, and they believe they'll collect revenue from 5G mobile and 5G home by 2020. This means waves of new revenue and profits, giving the company a stock huge room to spike up. Verizon is a pretty safe company, slow moving stock with a 4% dividend. They're up 25% in one year, and 21% in 5 years, so not much movement. A nice PE ratio of 15.7, good profits, and even better price to sales ratio of 1.8, good revenue. They have high debts, seems to be common in this sector. 
Verizon is on track to be one of the first mobile carriers to launch 5G by the end of 2019. They're going to release 5G this month in a few cities, the first in America. Verizon is also the country's largest carrier, so you're investing in the top. By 2020, Verizon will likely be the leader of 5G in terms of providing the service. So take a close look at this company. Another service provider is AT&T. This is a company with a 6.5% dividend. That's insane. They're down 11% in the past year and 12% in 5 years, which explains their high dividend. This is not the best news, but it does mean they're on a huge sale. If you're a believer in buy the dip, then this is the stock to watch. Nice value numbers in the PE ratio of 11, PS ratio of 1.3, and normal amounts of debts. Revenue looks pretty good, no huge growth here, but average of 8% a year. Income is a bit more random, with a negative 34% in 2018, but 126% in 2017. This company is number 2, right after Verizon, so it might be interesting to invest in an underdog. AT&T had 35 years of dividend growth, so this 6.5% might actually be stable. On the downside, there has been some drama recently with the listing of 4G as 5G-E. This is not actually 5G. This brought some negative press since phones don't even have 5G on them right now. They recently acquired DirecTV and Time Warner for over $160 billion. This might not be the best move since people are not using satellite TV as much. This caused a drop over the last 5 years. So you'll be buying a company on a dip, which could see better returns. So who's providing all the towers needed for this new technology? American Tower Corp. This company leases their towers for data providers like Verizon. When 5G rolls out, requiring more towers and stronger signals, this company will be the first to benefit. Let's look at their value. 37% in one year, 144% in five years, a very nice return with a 1.9% dividend, high PE ratio of 69, high price of sales of 11, and high debts. We see revenue going up every year, about 15% on average a year. Not bad. Profits are a bit more random, but an increase of 30% in 2017. They seem a bit overpriced right now because of their spike with 5G getting closer. Even though they're not the best value, their towers will be needed in the future. They're basically selling the shovels to the gold rush. 4G took 200,000 cell phone towers and $200 billion back in 2015. And this company really benefited from that. They're up over 200% since 2011 when 4G first started. AT&T thinks 5G will require another 300,000 towers. AMT has over 160,000 towers globally. They want to retrofit a lot of them for 5G. AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, and T-Mobile are using their towers. They usually have contracts of 5 to 10 years, so this is a fairly safe deal. There is risk because they don't have the best value, but it's like buying land to unstruck oil. There's also risk that 5G towers are smaller and need to be closer to the actual phones, making these old towers less useful. But these smaller towers around town will actually need to connect to the bigger towers, which AMT owns. This company requires a lot more research, but they're already spiking, so they must be doing something right. There's huge potential on this company. We cover the service provider, the chip maker, and the tower and land owners. Who's in charge of making all the technology required for 5G to run? This is Nokia and Ericsson, two old school phone companies that don't focus on phones anymore. They both have multi-billion dollar infrastructure contracts from Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. So both of these companies are already on contract to get paid. Both companies are on huge dips of 20 to 30% in the past five years. But they have good dividends of 3.9% on Nokia and 1.2% on Ericsson. They have no PE ratios, so not profitable. Usually, they can't compete with the Chinese companies, but recent news of possible spying from Chinese 5G providers made the American government ban them. So Huawei and CTE are likely not coming to America with the technology. The only choices in America is Nokia and Ericsson. This gives them huge room for bouncing back up, especially on this dip. Profits will be much higher soon, hopefully with actual PE ratios for both companies. Another huge benefit is patents these companies have for 5G. Phone makers will have to pay them a certain percent per phone to use their technology. Nokia has capped this price at $3.50, but imagine that on every phone that requires their patents. Every 5G phone would be paying Nokia and Ericsson. That's billions in revenue. The next one is a fan favorite in the market. I'm talking about Apple and the iPhones. The most recent version of iPhone didn't contain 5G. This means the iPhone XS cannot use 5G. This will likely change with the new versions, but they announced that they will likely skip 5G in 2019, with the 2020 model possibly being the first. This company is the biggest in the world with a 1.5% dividend up 13% in the past year, and 148% in 5. With great value numbers in the PE ratio of 15.6, PS ratio of 3.4, and pretty good debts. This is a safe stock to own in general, but they're on a heavy dip at the moment. Once 5G rolls out, people will have a reason to upgrade. A lot of people want the newest and best technology, so if the iPhone XS can actually handle 5G, they'll be looking to upgrade as soon as the new iPhones come out. The devices like the announced Galaxy S10 5G will be the first on the market. Apple is lagging behind a bit here. New technology will increase profits by a lot for Apple, especially considering the lower iPhone sales. This is a stock to watch for 2020. That's when they have new iPhones and gain new profits. Another well-known company to watch is Intel. Another chip maker working on the 5G modem 
Qualcomm XM8160. They're a bit behind Qualcomm, expecting to be available by the end of 2019, and devices by 2020. But the advantage here is their partner with Apple. Their chips will be in the 5G iPhone in 2020. Both Intel and Apple are safer place because they're both blue chip companies. Look at their numbers. They're up 10% in one year and 105% in five, with a 2.2% dividend. Great numbers for such a safe company. A PE ratio of 12, very good value in profits, price to sale of 3.5, and very low debts. Intel will also benefit from all things coming to 5G. Virtual reality, driverless cars, all things that require the modem, and computer chips. If you're a huge believer in iPhones in general, and don't want to risk too much for 5G, both Intel and Apple are perfect stocks to watch. You might have noticed a lot of these companies are on dips, meaning bad news in recent years. This is good, because you don't want to buy a stock that's already spiked up. A company on a 50% dip will have a higher chance at a 300% gain. The telecommunication companies are not likely to go up higher than 100%, because they're so big. They've reached as many customers as they can, and growth is slow, but 5G will still bring new profits. These are long-term stocks that will grow along with the dividends for a safer part of your portfolio. Apple and Intel have more room to grow. They're high value and a low risk right now. But the real growth companies come from Nokia, Ericsson, and AMT because they're more niche and some are on huge dips. To know exactly what stocks I'll be investing in, join my stock market group below. It's very affordable right now at a 75% discount. Otherwise, you can wait for my deeper analysis on a few of these companies. These are definitely stocks to watch for the coming 10 years. We're getting in early because 5G is only here by the end of the year. Marijuana stocks spiked up hundreds of percent since last year. We can see something similar in 5G, as long as we do our research right now. There's probably only a 6 month window before some of these companies spike up at least 100%. But I'm not recommending you buy any of these. Only watch them until research is done. Subscribe and leave a like for more of these videos. I make them every day, and we'll be making more detailed videos soon. Keep watching the Buy the Best Stocks, the Monk Way.